Sarah, can you hear us? Yes. We're having microphone trouble, so just bear with us. Okay, no worries. I'm not sure if it's related, but the screen is flickering quite a bit, too. Again, all right. Um, so let's um, start with uh, the work session tonight. We have um, one sixty South Elm. Any comments from the board? Um, I think it's fine. Historic, the historic insert was the wrong address, but you guys had no comments. This guy was the wrong street. All right, next one is uh, 21 West Cedar Avenue. Any comments from the board? I thought it looked good as submitted. Same. Yep. Same here. All right, next we. Right? Or did you have a comment? Okay. Next, we have uh, 225 South Avenue. Any comments on that one? That's also okay. I think my only comment was something about the west door roof new meeting agenda oh i got it really yep. oh i do see that now i was looking at the wrong meeting agenda all right but those are our three public hearings Next on our list is 675 West Lockwood Avenue. Any comments? So that there's going to be no one up on this back wall, right? 
that's what's proposed is my understanding. And, you know, I was thinking that if they wanted to just keep the brick soldier course trim and keep the row lock trim and then do like a decorative brick inset in a different pattern or some closed shutters or something that would get them where they wanted to go, but not have a totally blank wall. Or, or, yeah, or, 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 or like or like they do in the historic districts in the city. That's typically acceptable. Yeah. So, yeah. So we can we can check and see which they would prefer. I guess. All right. Okay, um, next we have uh, 528 Bacon Avenue. I thought the materials on the front, that board and batten and the shutters just felt like a lot going on in a little amount of space. Felt it was kind of busy. Um, I preferred the previous front door design. And then I don't know if this is up for discussion or not, but I was wondering if the garage man door and the window above could be aligned. They're slightly off. Right now. I had similar comments that the uh, newly proposed front elevation has too many materials going in to too many different directions. Um, I think it would be help a lot to maybe delete the shutters and um, perhaps go with a less intricate garage door style. And I actually thought the previous submittal was more cohesive as far as style. It looked more like a, a colonial type style. Now this looks like it's kind of a combination of uh, let's try to be a farmhouse and let's try to be colonial. And it, it just um, doesn't work as well as the previous submittal. Um, so maybe we can discuss ways to calm down that front elevation and then um, also, too, just this is a minor suggestion, not a requirement, just to widen that horizontal trim board um, at the bottom of the side elevation gables. Yeah, if, they, yeah, if it keeps the separate material. Comments on part twenty eight? No. Next on our list is seventeen West Lawn. That one looks like it was pre approved. Uh, seven eleven Sherwood pre approved. That brings us to five oh eight Oak Street. Um, I had a couple. Um, there's an existing concrete stair at the front, and it, it's unclear if that's being demolished and rebuilt. Um, and then I was wondering if we could add a window to the powder room on the front elevation window. I thought that would be nice. Just uh, it'd be nice to see some three dimensional views to see kind of how things are going because it's such a contemporary look. I'm not sure what is what. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of my comments was the elevation drawings need a little more development to more clearly show the transition of the materials. Um, and then also, um, I'm fine with putting a contemporary addition on a traditional style house, but. I think it works better if there's some sort of elements of continuity 
whether it be some similar materials or similar vocabulary somehow, um, or even some like massing and forms that are similar that tie the two together. Um, so that's my, my concern with this one. And also um, when we look at uh, the ARB ordinance, we're supposed to be reviewing uh, for general conformity of the style and design with the surrounding structures. And for me, this is going to be extremely visible from the street. I drove over there and took a look. It's very visible. And I just don't think it fits well into the neighborhood as it's proposed. So um, I think some, some modifications to maybe um, relate the two, the existing and the addition would be in order. I was uh, just looking at the drawings, but um, I, I think originally when I started looking at this one, I was looking for existing context photos, and they must have fallen out of mine because I never did see them. So, okay. Yeah, I didn't get any either, but I'm familiar with the house. So. Right. I see. Yeah, and then um, to me, it's really, I think, a question of um clarifying what all the materials are and i don't like what carol said i don't mind a contemporary edition i i it's hard it was hard for me to tell if there was anything that was tying the two together since i didn't have the elevations um of or the pictures of the existing house myself so are they matching they're matching the, the at least the picture that we did with the picture we talked about that would be helpful mm -hmm. If there's that existing 512 part of that one, the new addition to 512, that might help. Doesn't look like it. The roof is kind of angled. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I'm for them, but you know. that could be a, a way to help. Yeah, I mean, tie it in. Sure, sure. Three dimensional image at this point. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the Everyone, I'm on, and if you are not speaking to the microphone or the room, I can hear it. So, uh. like when the conversation happens, they hear it. Yeah, so if you're not speaking to one that's agreeing, grab someone else's that's agreeing. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Go from green to red all the time. <laughs> yeah. And it, it'll stay on for a little while and then go back off. <laughs> if I'm going to guess. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, this is, this is red again. That's a good guess. All right. Three. All right, on to 710 Fairview Avenue. Comments? I think my only comment on this one was consider adding a window to the east elevation. And I, a clarification of the foundation finish. I noticed that the window style at the addition doesn't match the existing and thought that that could help. If they all match. Yeah, because the uh, existing buttons on the upper it's side actually. are pretty elaborate. Or, or also, I, I know that you, newer buttons can be thicker just because of the technology. Well, I was wondering if they could repurpose the windows they're demoing out and have, oh. you know, I mean, it, it's not energy, it's not really energy conscious, but it could be a, an idea. Yeah, I just wanted some clarification. Um, this is such a, a nice house and it has great character. 
Um, and I just wanted to verify the notes on the elevation say the window corner and rake trim will match the existing, but in fact, it's drawn much smaller than the existing. And I just wanted to verify which is correct, um, the note or, or the graphics, just to be sure that we're helping to carry around that really nice existing character. And uh, I was also wondering if the trim around uh, the new rear doors was going to match that existing wider trim width. Um, I agree that uh, using the four over one grill pattern in the new addition would, would help to kind of blend the two together. And then um, I was wondering if the entire house is being recited or what the plan was for um, where the new addition joins the existing house. Um, and because it, you know, when you drive down this street, it's one of those streets that's fortunate enough to have really nice interest and character on all four sides of the house. And the way this addition is, is currently proposed, it just kind of makes this house a box on the back. So, um, a sensitive transition between the existing and the addition, I think, could help um, keep some interest on the side and retain a look of the original massing rhythm, like maybe pull the addition in just a couple of inches or a few inches so the back corners are revealed and it, it wouldn't look quite so boxy. Um, so I, I think because it's a beautiful house, um, it has a lot of great character. It would be nice to to see some of those tweaks that would help maintain that in the in the new addition. Yeah. Uh, also on the uh, west elevation, I noticed that the new windows on the addition, the head heights don't match, nor the cell heights match. So, if they do make those match, that'd be helpful. In the addition, in addition to the muttons. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, also too, I, you know, it seems like that pergola is a bit high um, and might look more proportional to be lowered. And just as a conversation item, I wondered if they considered using a, a roof that would actually provide them some weather protection at those back doors. Um, that's just a, a, a question. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Part of the comments about the window, um, I would defer to the owner on that. It's their house, their kitchen, the cabinets. I don't think it's any big deal not to have a window there. All right. Um, Fairview is on next on our list is. 806A East Pacific Avenue fire request, and then the uh, new house itself. Comments from the board. Um, I think the, the proposed house is out of scale to the neighbors directly on the other side of them. Um, even the newer tract, I'm not calling tract, but the, the newer 80s homes on the street, they're only a 0.25 FAR. So to, I think going above the 0.32 is sort of why i mean you could probably even get that point zero two out of making the court the the central hallway six inches narrower it's it's not a big change i think to go to point three two or or to go from point three four to point three two i'm I'm personally fine with the far request. I was, I was okay with it too. And I thought that the um, context diagram was really nice. I'm glad that they included that. I didn't have any problems with this house in, in regard to the scale or the houses in proximity to it. So I, if I'm understanding it correctly, the 
it's a two story addition, so it's 173 square feet, basically working out to be about 85 square foot per floor. Um, I was okay with that. <clears throat> Yeah, I was, um, I thought the diagram was helpful too, and um, I think it's nicely designed. Um, so I didn't really have any issues so far. Um, I think the house design, I only made a comment about considering kitchen windows on the west elevate. Um, and that was it for me. Yeah, I, I think the house is a lovely design. Um, and I, I had a similar comment, um, Bob, if they wanted to put a window in the kitchen or even introduce a window into that pantry that's there, uh, perhaps even a small one similar to the, the smaller windows that are on the opposite elevation, that that would help kind of fill that in a little bit as well. It's a, overall, it's, you know, I think it's a, a really beautiful house. Okay. Do we care about trees? Um, as a ARB, we don't. The we don't really make comments about. Okay. The I, won't. I mean, we care about trees. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but for this board, we're. If you live here thirty years and you spend fifteen thousand dollars. Tree trimming. Trees dying. <laughs> right. Um, I think that that's one of the first things I had to do when I bought our house is take a silver maple down. It was sad and expensive. Um, okay. No, so um, typically, I mean, we will make comments in context because sometimes I'm just saying that those three guys aren't their neighbors, right? <laughs> oh, I no, I don't think there's any issue with pointing that out. Okay, are those trees? I'm assuming they are. If they're bushes, then that's fine. That's fine. It's like Big Friday, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. All right, um, at this point, we have made it through the work session, so we're gonna take a small little break. If you're online, we'll be back in nine minutes. Thank you.
All right, welcome everyone to the uh, Architectural Review Board meeting. Uh, our work session um, was earlier and we're beginning our regular session at this point. We'd like to introduce Yolanda Wilkins and Andrew Klossman with the city. We have Sarah Richardson, who's our council liaison. Um, Carol Dunkey and Tracy Collins, Ken Burns, David Yates, and myself, Bob Buckman, all volunteer architects who sit on the board. First item is review of meeting minutes from November 16th. I'm not sure if we have. Um, David, you were here on the 16th, were you not? Were you... I think so. Yeah, because it, it's showing that you were not here, and I was pretty sure that you were. On the 16th? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so David was here. Mark is was here, but he's not here tonight. So there's three of us, which is enough to review and approve. So do I have a motion on the meeting minutes from the 16th? I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of November 16th with the correction that David Yates was present. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The meeting minutes, yeah, so things I didn't count. <laughs> but those meeting minutes are approved uh, from Carol, David, and myself. <laughs> All right, next on our list, we have a couple of pre-approvals. Individually sent back. First one is 417 West Swan. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve 417 West Swan with the clarification that the deck stair and railing will be pressure treated with composite treads. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 417 West Swan is approved. Next, we have 711 Sherwood Drive. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve 711 Sherwood Drive as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we have three projects that are public hearings. Um, at this point, if you read your project name and you're present, uh, just come up and introduce yourself with a microphone and we'll discuss your project. Um, if you're online, you raise your Zoom hand and Yolanda will add you to the uh, list so we can have the discussion. First one is 160 South Elm Avenue. Is there anyone present for that one? There's a hand up. Jessica. Good evening. Hello, Jessica. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. All right, so at our pre-meeting, I don't think we had any comments on this project other than it was nicely done. Thank you. Uh, but it is a public hearing, so we have to ask if there's any other comments from anyone in the public. And if there is, um, let me know. Raise your hand on Zoom. Or let us know in person. Don't see anyone. So could I have a motion, please? I make a motion to approve 160 South Elm, Elm Avenue as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Next, we have 21 West Cedar Avenue. Anyone here for that project? It's a two-story uh, rear and side addition with a first floor a family room and that could be later converted to master suite for living in place. And then the second floor uh, master suite as well and a new deck. We also have a kitchen bump out as well. Um, materials will be similar to the original house, hardy siding um, and uh, Plaid, aluminum plaid, wood windows, and shingles to match. I saw in one of the one of the 
comments that Mara shared with us, there was a comment about the rear gable versus a hip. Um, yeah, I had made that comment when I was reviewing it, and um, it was just a thought to make that rear rear. Um, one of the, we actually some... looked at that. One of the reasons we were thinking of not doing it was just because the it's so much larger than the other hip on the back, and there are other gables that we thought it might look kind of funny with the two different size hips. So that's yeah. why we went with the gable. Okay, mm -hmm. I think that's fine. All right, well, thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing, so is there anyone else present that wants to make a comment on 21 West Cedar Avenue on Zoom or otherwise? Seeing no one, may I have a motion, please? Make a motion to approve 21 West Cedar Avenue as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, you're approved. Have a good evening. And oh. probably five more, yeah. Of course you are. I see that. Uh, 225 South Elm Avenue. Uh, there was a clarification of, about the uh, west door. Is it going to remain or the uh, roof? Or is the west door remaining and the roof or no? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, so that was just an error on our part, but um, this project um, was a screen porch we designed. Um, their kids have a lot of allergies, so they're converting it into a sunroom. Um, windows will go in between the columns and doors, and then the lower panels will be filled in with uh, cedar shake siding to match the cedar shake on the house. That's mm -hmm. yeah. good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anyone else present that wants to make a comment on 225 South Elm since this is a public hearing? I see no one. Anyone on Zoom? With that, I see no one. Can I have a motion, please? I make a motion to uh, approve 225 South Elm Avenue um, with condition or clarification that the roof over the west door is remaining and not being removed. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. 225 South Elm is approved. Next on our list, we have 160 South Elm Avenue. Anyone present for that one? Yep. We, 675 West Lockwood. I, I'm, re I'm reading the. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. My apologies. 675 West Lockwood Avenue. Yep. Is there anyone present for that project? Hi, my name is Randy Winson. I'm the architect from Align Studio for this project. And the homeowner is right here. Tony Jemby is the homeowner. Hi. Welcome, Randy and Tony. Thank you. All right, comments from the board. I personally, I think it's fine to go ahead and delete that window, but we wanted to maybe keep something of architectural interest there, like perhaps um, go ahead and maintain your, your brick trim, just like there would be a window there, but instead of a window, infill that opening with maybe shutters that look like they're in a closed position, or perhaps do a brick inset, just slightly inset of a contrasting pattern, like a herringbone or something. Um, so anyway, that's that was kind of my thought. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't too happy to see that window go because in that whole wall, it's just a blank wall of brick. But I think if we do do an architectural element, that would help of some sort. All right, there's nobody that really can see that wall, but yeah, we will. Um... We'll do something and submit it to, for your approval. I think we can. I mean, you guys could make a decision now if you wanted, and we could put it in our motion if you're open to something like that. Well, we could. I think, I mean, if you want to do something with the shutters, you know, I mean, shutters or the border or whatever. Yeah, we'll, I figure, mean, yeah, we'll do something for sure. And yeah. plain shape and it would look like it's window, but yeah. Yeah. it's still open right now for windows. So we can easily oh. yeah. there you go. edge it out for the window, but we just do the inset of it. 
So I think that would look nice. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, if the, if everybody on the board is okay with it, maybe we could put it in the motion both ways to either do a brick inset or the shutters, unless you know if everybody's okay with that. Okay. That's your, your brick insert is going to be the easiest to do. Yeah. yeah. It's going to look the best. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm okay with it, not doing anything, but. It's, I mean, we can work just, with the crew here. Yeah, we can. If you want to, if you want to go for the brick, for sure, we can read it into the motion that way. There's no carpenter. There's no painting. Right. And you're already doing a blank brick wall, so the brick right. didn't change either. So. Okay. Easy enough. Technical difficulties. <laughs> All right. Um, with that, then do I have a motion on 675 West Lockwood? Do we want open comment to the public? Uh, it's not a public hearing. Oh, it's not. Okay. Um, I, I, I uh, propose to accept uh, 675 West Lockwood Avenue um, with, the, with the provision that they uh, provide a recessed um, brickwork where the windows are on the wall. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, all right, thank you very much, Randy. Have a good evening. Next, we have 528 Bacon Avenue. Is there anyone present for 528? Yep. Online. Mark? Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay. I, I'm Mark Manlin with the Manlin Company, and I'm the builder for 528. Okay. Comments from the board? I had none. Um, yeah, I was wondering, um, it seems like with the newly proposed changes, we have a lot of different materials on the front elevation, and it's become quite busy. There's a lot of materials going in a lot of different directions. It would be helpful to simplify that. And I was thinking that removing the shutters would help. Um, and then also perhaps going to a less intricate garage door style. And right now it it's, seems like it's a combination of two styles. It's sort of trying to be colonial, and then it's also trying to be a modern farmhouse. Um, I was wondering, do you have a, a buyer for this particular house that's interested in these specific changes, or could you give us a little background on what's motivating the changes? Of course, yes. We, we do have a buyer. Um, these changes were directed by them. Uh, when I got the comments back a couple of days ago, I uh, had a meeting with them and we kind of went through item by item and they asked me to come back and um, I guess propose some changes um, that are hopefully acceptable. But um, they, they like the, the, the revised style. I understand it perhaps is a little bit of a mishmash, but a couple of things that they were more than comfortable with would be deleting the shutters. Um, on the front elevation, um, we've got, got horizontal siding, we've got board and batten, and we also have stone. And they asked if it would be possible on the left side, second floor, if we just transition or change that to board and batten. So the, the full front is board and batten. Um, the thought process was it would, I guess, eliminate or reduce the all the variations that you've alluded to. So um, that was a suggestion that was uh, uh, that we discussed. Um, hopefully, those are acceptable. I know that there was a comment about the front door. Um, they hand selected this particular front door after we had frankly, already ordered and had delivered the one that was on the plan, and they just didn't like it. They thought that the six panel was kind of generic, and they didn't like the the arched transom over the top. And after reviewing a number of different door styles, uh, this was the one that they really liked. 
you know, with the, just looking at it now with the um, straight front door head, it almost looks like that um, the arch that's in that gable, it looks like it's just kind of there to show off siding rather than to show off a nice transom. I think it also might look nice to just go ahead and put, uh, eliminate that arch in that gable if you're going with the, the straight door head. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, as I look at it, I, I agree. So uh, that way you've got the, the, uh, the flat portion uh, on that gable to mimic the top of the door. Yeah, and I think that helps calm down some of the lines on the, the front elevation a bit. I agree. Yeah, it's a little more craftsman style. Yeah. Simple. Is the uh, garage door as you drew it, is that actually what it looks like? Well, no, I, I we they wanted, uh, we originally designed the house with a seven foot tall garage door and uh -huh. they came back after we had, uh, 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 after we had framed it, unfortunately, and said they wanted an eight foot because they've got a taller, I guess, a, 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 either an SUV or a truck. Uh -huh. So um, the architect, I guess, when I redirected him to draw it, just figured that he would add another panel. So it went from being three panels high, the pattern, I guess I should say, in the door to four panels plus the, the, the lights or glass above. I believe the supplier that we work with can provide the same style of what's proposed with the three high plus the glass versus the four. So it, it, it I, yeah, I guess it did get a little more busy with the fourth, uh, the fourth box or fourth level of pattern on the door. I've, I've just never seen a garage door where the, the lines between the windows don't align with the all the little panels below it so that and yeah I, i'm, I'm, I've I'm with you liberties with drawing up garage doors before <laughs> yeah I, and now that you mentioned it i i think they probably just worked from a template that they had and not a very good one at that and it, i i agree i think we can yeah, we can do better and, and simplify yeah. it do it more in sync with what's on the original yeah 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 the prior one works much better we can do that we can yeah, definitely do that eight foot height right so right it, yeah. it, with an eight foot height that's correct yeah which i think the eight foot height looks a lot nicer too so it'd be the eight foot height with three loads of rows of panels and then the the glass is that correct i think that will yeah. help calm things down a little bit too and there's the uh, and there's the head of the drive door that align with the window left of the door uh, ask, I'm sorry, the question again was, will the, the head of the garage door align with the window left of the front door? So there's a constant line. Oh, boy. Yeah. You know what? It really, it looks like it, it really is. Yes. It, it mm -hmm. uh, they should align pretty, pretty much exact. I, I'm, I'm obviously the way it's drawn, it looks like it is, but I believe it will. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that you're already in construction, so this might be uh, not possible. But on the right side elevation where the garage man door is and that window above, they're just slightly off. And I'm wondering if there's an opportunity to line those or, or not. Well, the yeah, I went, I went and looked at it today. Um, what we're looking at is is the man door is centered in that in that back storage area in the garage. And the windows above are symmetrical in the bedroom above. Mm -hmm. So if you shifted the door over, it wouldn't be center in that space. And if you shifted the window over, it would be kind of out of sync in the bedroom. So it looks like it's about six to eight to 10 inches out of line, but that's the reason why. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. We'll just leave it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not worth it. Yeah, it's reacting right. to the program. Beyond yeah. Time. Thank you. And then also, too, I, I think it um, might be worth considering widening the um, 
horizontal trim that's on the side elevation at the bottom of the gables? Um, that's fine. I yeah, I, I think I, that I, would I think, help help make it a, look a little more substantial. Yeah, I agree. I think we, we that's certainly something that we can account for. Okay. All right, any other comments from the board? No, I think if we do go with board and batten, I just wanted to point out that that would wrap around the corner of the little pop out on the second floor. Right here. Yeah. We're talking about the entire front elevation and the yeah. entire left side. So that the material turns the corner. Uh, over the sense. garage? Are we talking about over the front door or over the garage? Over the front door. And over the garage. And over the garage, yes. Got it. Yes, I I I understand. All right. Well, I think with that we can make a motion. Carol. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. Every everybody check the list as we go. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve 528 Bacon Avenue with the following understandings. The front elevation will be entirely board and battened, including turning the corners at the front elevation projections. The arch at the gable over the front door will be eliminated. The Horizontal trim at the bottom of the gables on the side elevation will be widened. The garage door will be eight feet high. The door style will be simplified to include three rows of horizontal panels and windows above. And no shutters on the front of the house. Second. Second. Anything else? No. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. All right, Mark, you're approved. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good night. Have a good evening. All right. So moving on. I believe we're on uh, 528 Bacon. No, that's one. Uh, five, right. 508. Let's see. Oh, oh, I see we're doing the pre approvals as well. Oh, 508 Oak yeah, Street. Right. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we just did. Hi, uh, Chandler Aarons, uh, owner architect. Okay. Um, so we're looking to do a, a five, little over 500 square foot addition, master bedroom suites uh, behind and a little bit to the side of the existing house. I think one of the big challenges with our lot is it's almost 26 feet from the street to the backyard. So it's quite a bit of a slope. Um, and even up to the first floor is a good you know eight foot uh, distance. So as we're putting this addition into the back, um, we want the master bedroom to be able to have doors out to the backyard. Mm -hmm. And so it needs to kind of step up a little bit. Uh, so it start on the first floor level uh, where it attaches to the uh, existing house. We just have it kind of step up uh, inside to the, uh, the bathroom level, then up to a bed area. Mm -hmm. so one of the things that's doing is kind of pushing up the roof line a little bit. Um, our goal with this project um, is not to try and make it look exactly like the existing house. Um, so you kind of celebrate the the fact that it is an addition that's new, but to try and find certain geometries of the uh, roof line, uh, if you look at the um, west elevation, uh, that we can slope the roof down to meet up with that roof line. So it still feels like it's part of uh, the historic house, the old house, um, but not uh, you know, trying to replicate um, that history. So part of what we're doing is the material is different. Uh, we have um, horizontal siding 
uh, on the existing house. Uh, on the addition would be a vertical uh, rain screen of a black stained cedar. Um, and uh, we're trying to make it a little bit more minimalist in the detailing. Uh, so the rain screen pulls off a little bit and hides the gutter and downspout details. It's a little bit fussy, um, but I'm just kind of interested in making it just a little bit more kind of minimal in that sense. Um, the, uh, on the south side, which is pretty much hidden by the main house, uh, that's where we have the overhang. Um, we have a little bit of a shaded area on the south side for the uh, doors that exit into uh, what would be a patio area uh, deck. Um, should I go through uh, some of the comments, Demar? Should I go through that? Those? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so uh, the first one, um, yeah, uh, well, North Arrow is in the plans. Yes, I agree. <laughs> it's on the site plan. Um, uh, the concrete stair on the front sidewalk. Um, because of the slope of the front yard, there's never been a driveway. Um, and clearly we need to get excavation equipment up in there. Um, we actually need it before anything else because our foundation wall is cracked horizontally and it's failing. Uh, so we need to get excavation equipment up there no matter what. So we kind of need to cut a driveway in. In order to do that, we absolutely have to move the stairs. Mm -hmm. They're exactly in the way. So we do have to shift the stairs over. And in doing so, we need to have a, a small, we'll have the concrete stairs that go up from the street and we have to turn up to the right uh, to be able to get up to the front porch. It's really the only way to fit uh, the new driveway in between the house and the property line. Yeah. Um, then the uh, guardrail um, for that new uh, stair, um, essentially uh, we'll have you know, separate footings uh, for that. Uh, part of that structure will be just to hold the guardrail, part of it to hold the stairs as well. And it's just kind of extending it up to become guardrail height. Um, the powder room on the front elevation um, that is possible to put a window in there. The reason I didn't have a window in there is I was going to use that as a shear wall. It's kind of supporting the whole back wall of the existing house where we're opening it up um, for the kitchen. <laughs> um, so we're, you know, just to get that extension out a little bit, just to get into the new um, addition, you have to open it up a little bit. So uh, just kind of pushing the, the lateral loading off uh, to the new addition. Um, it's possible to maybe put a brace in that wall and have a uh, window up a little bit higher past a diagonal brace um, and still get my shear out of that. But uh, it, it is possible to do that. It'd just be easier just to keep it blank and all of the shear wall. <laughs> just for ease of, yeah. <laughs> Are you talking um, about yeah. Yeah. the yeah. west elevation now? Yeah, the yeah, west. The west. I mean, it seems like with the, I'm just thinking out loud, it seems like if you want daylight in there, then there's probably a way to do it, right? You, you look like you have enough space on your shear wall. Probably. Develop, I mean, a little daylight. It, I, I'm yeah. just looking at it now, you know, understand because it's. That wasn't my comment, but I, I'm looking at just wondering. Um, you know, it seems like you could sneak something in there. Yeah, I think I probably could. With the vertical rain screen, mm -hmm. you know, I think there's opportunity to do something really simple and take us off. Yeah, uh, I think I could do that. Is the rain screen going to be off the wall, um, what, an inch and a half? No, in, in case it's going to be much more uh, because it has to account for the gutter. gutter. And then, uh, so if you look at some of the details, um, the uh, wall section on A400, um, you can see in uh, number wall section two and three, yeah. Um, you can see how it, it's held up 
quite a bit just yeah. outside the uh, gutter and the downspouts. I see that one. You don't have a good model of this, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I did, but not the full exterior. <laughs> right. It's partially built. Those architects working for themselves. Well, that's, that's true, right? well. <laughs> <laughs> and look at that wall section. I am curious. That, are you extending the window? Or how are you finishing out the window jams in the eight inch extension? So it'll be a steel plate. Okay. Um, so it'll be basically a, a right. welded box all the way around. Yeah. Uh, really painted. Simple, thin. Yep. Really thin edge. Um, yeah, that was really nice. Yeah. Um, ready for the next sure. item? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the um, the material on the underside of the exposed uh, roof overhang, I like to do uh, uh, redwood, um, just um, clear coat mm -hmm. on it. Um, so it'd be nice and protected from the, the roof. Right. And yeah, I didn't have a uh, note on the drawings for that. Um, the the next question was the elevation drawing theme more developed to show material transitions more clearly. Um, wasn't sure what was um, if there's anything particular on that. Maybe it was just with to do with some of the detailing and showing how the um, rain screen. Um, yeah. I think if you were to fill in more of the materials on all of the elevations oh, yeah. and then also uh, just include some basic line weights, it would make your drawings read more clearly. Um, I think that would help a lot. I don't know if you, um, in your program, you have the capability of bringing up a 3D view of how the proposed project would look with both the existing and the new addition. I think that would be really helpful to, to judge how it's going to look. Okay. okay, yes, I do have that. Yeah, I, I really, um, you know, I, I'm fine with the idea of putting a contemporary addition on a traditional house, but for me, and for neighborhood fit, to me, these are a little too different. Um, I'd like to see some more common elements or um, more similar massing, just some something to tie the two together a little bit more. Because um, in my comment, um, I noted that when we review the ARB reviews projects, it um, we are looking for general conformity with the style and design of the surrounding structures. And for me right now, as it is, it's a bit too much of a departure. I think it's an interesting design. I, I yeah. applaud your innovations. I just like to see it modified a bit. Um, and then I think that 3D view would be really helpful because you know, with the topography and just driving down the street, it's gonna be really clearly visible. Um, so I think those things for me would be really helpful um, to, to more clearly identify what it is we're reviewing and approving. Yeah, part of the intent with um, going with the black stained cedar was it makes it kind of recede a little bit more. Um, and so it, you know, it's behind the existing house and it'll feel like it's um, kind of pushed back a little bit further. Um, try to bring the massing down to line the uh, roof geometry so yeah, that there is a dialogue right. between the two. Um, it, it, on our streets, um, like... we do have um, a house with uh, black stained uh, wood siding on it. Um, we also have a house with uh, metal uh, fencing, mm -hmm. uh, silver, and a sanitary roof. Um, so it kind of ties into that. And there's also a number of um, nice uh, precedents in um, Webster Groves of adding modern additions onto the back, which are really quite uh, radically different. Um, Tom Niemeyer uh, from Space Architects, his uh, 
house on uh, North Forest. Um, and, you know, it's, um, I do have, right, it's um, the, uh, the wood, uh, fairly large kind of box, very different than the sloping roof of the existing house. Uh, and it's probably one of the more radical um, departures from the existing style. Or um, even the you know the guys from uh, Made Man design on Tappan. But you know that house. Um, I see that house from my house, and I think it looks great. Yeah. Um, because and the reason I think it looks great is because the massing, the elements, the roof slope, the proportion fit in beautifully with the street. I mean, I think that's a fantastic house. And like I, said, I look out my kitchen window and I see that. So I, I'm not opposed at all to contemporary architecture. I just, um, I think it would be really helpful if we had like 3D modeling that was a little more developed um, to get more of a feel than what I'm getting here from these drawings. Okay. Uh yeah, I mean, I, I think when I started redoing this, I, you know, I just the second what Carol said, I, I mean, I don't have any issue with a modern addition. Matter of fact, you know, I, I really like that idea. Um, remove, but just understanding it in context was a little difficult because it was basically one line weight and, you know, hard to really see um, how this was going to fit in the context. I think, you know, I remember when we reviewed Tom's drawings, we had three, you know, three dimensional model. So, I mean, I think some of that stuff is helpful for us, especially with something so radically different. Um, but also for me, when I look at some of the line weights and the, and the material that's unclear, like when I'm looking at the, I'm sorry, the, I, I've got the drawings on the sure. board here. But, um, <laughs> when I'm looking at the south elevation, I'm not sure where the, where the fiber cement panel board ends and the vertical range beam begins. It's it's a little unclear. Maybe some of the roof in intersections as well, exactly what I'm seeing. So even if it's not a finished 3D model, if you have some three-dimensional, uh, I'm not sure what program you used that did this in, but I'm sure there's something 3D. Three, three yeah, no, would, <laughs> would yeah. be helpful <laughs> for me um, to second what Carol was saying. Um, because you do have the vertical screen, you ha you do have the panel, the fiber cement panel, which is the light. Is that also going to be uh, stained black or colored uh, somewhere or wood? Kind or, of dark gray. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I think that whole addition being sort of a uniformly darker material, I think is nice. I mean, I think that'll look. I think that'll look nice with the house. But the idea of what might tie them together. Um, I was wondering about your concrete, like when I look at the north elevation, I can't quite tell on the existing house if that's the gray is existing concrete foundation. Will those materials meet up and what's the new gonna look like next to the old? It's some of those questions okay. that I had. Yeah, I mean, the, the it's basically gonna be a slab on grade. Yeah, uh, okay, addition, gotcha. right? and so, the, the concrete cross wall will go down and that will be exposed uh, similar to the existing okay. house foundation. Makes sense. Yeah, because I guess on the south elevation, even though it looks like there's exposed foundation in your elevation, that'll actually be... Um... Yeah, the cement board will come down because the, you know, the floor level is just a little bit above Right, it's uh, the, the grade there. Right. The drawings make it look like it's, you know, a foot and a half off the ground. I, I'm trying to figure out where we're going here. Are we asking them to come back with more information? I all, all I'm saying is I I think if it, I I don't completely understand the interface on the site until the drawing. As far as the departure to ultra modern versus the the uh, the style of the original house, I think the wording of our ARB ordinance would strongly support what you're doing. So, I don't know. I don't know that we can intervene on that if if you're if you're 
claim is I don't quite get it because the information is inadequate? No, what I'm saying, Ken, is that I think there's information missing on the drawing for me to be able to fully judge it. If you had a three-dimensional image, that's all I'm saying. Well, that's that's what I'm asking. <laughs> uh, um, are you also modifying the east elevation of the existing house? It looks like the drawing's a little bit different than the than the uh, pictures. It looks like you have a sliding door and then mm -hmm. the elevation is like a three panel door. Yeah, so the idea is put in larger sliding door, a three panel door. Right, so there's some, that information should be on the drawing. You know, you know, any changes to the existing house that might you know be happening, we would want those to be clearly noted on the drawings. It's not, um, that's, I mean, these are, for me, these are minor things, but to to review this and make a you know a comment about it, I have to fully understand what I'm looking at, and because of the complexity, I think that's from that's my viewpoint. So that's all I'm saying. Okay. Just to say we're asking them to come back with more information. I am. I mean, I, I don't feel comfortable voting with, with this. I think it's. Um, I I love the idea. Of the I'm just a little unsure about some of the details. So, so the proposition here is we would table this. Right. But I'm just trying to figure that part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I We're going to get to that. I just want to make sure there weren't any other com comments. Okay. David, do you have any comments? Uh, not really. I, I just, I feel the, 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 the 3D model would be helpful to just see how it's sighted. Okay. And, and also, 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 I'm not sure how close the neighbor's house is to your house. Is it a large expanse or is it tight? No, it's on that side. It is pretty far. Yeah, because they have a double lot. Yeah, but, but the fact that your the additions only is happening from the back corner of the house back is no no concern to me really. Okay, Tracy. Um, you had made a comment about the shutters. The shutters are going to be removed or not? Oh, that's a question. Yeah. All right, because the you do not show shutters on your. Drawings, but they're on the house. So are those staying or going? Okay, well. Yeah, okay. So I think those are the kind of, yeah. I, I just have one comment. If, in fact, you are going to bring information back to us, you might want to just on a smaller piece of paper put each elevation because these are kind of hard to deal with up at the counter. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I personally, um, would really feel a lot more comfortable with revised drawings showing the information that we've asked in a 3D. I think I would feel a whole lot more comfortable about what I'm actually voting on. I think that would be really helpful. Okay, we'll do. Yeah, um, if that's accept acceptable, then Chandler will just table this until um, the next section and when you have revised drawings, just, um, I think, if you want to get it on the next one, it were the seventh. So we would just need that information back to the city by the seventh, because we're reviewing uh, on the twenty first. First, yeah. And then we could, you know, we'll, we'll either look at it at forehand and not have any comments, or you know, could all be good to go. So, all right, if that's acceptable. So, um, appreciate it. Um, we'll table it for now. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank Thanks. you very much. Right, good evening. Next, we have 710 Fairview Avenue. Good evening. I'm Good Jason evening. Hagen. I'm the Hi, Jason. Welcome. Comments from the board? <laughs> I, I think one comment was made about trying to add you know, a kitchen wall area that I, I mean, I can ask you to do that, but it's, I'm not going to disrupt your kitchen because you don't want to disrupt your kitchen. Right. So that's that's really, that was for the homeowner. The other reason why we didn't want a window there is because it, looking out, it looks to their neighbor and their neighbor has a, a derelict property. So looking out their kitchen window to look at their neighbor's falling down fence and all the yeah. stuff in the backyard, they're like, can we not do a window? We'd prefer not to look at that. So. I'm just saying my opinion would be that 
the utility, the storage component it, of the it, kitchen. It, and actually, it's a really small well kitchen. Would, uh, exceed any benefit. The neighbor gets looking at the window you didn't want to begin with. So. Yes, sir. Right. I think my comment was consider uh, adding one, so it wasn't a requirement, of course. Sure. Um, uh, I know someone else had mentioned. Uh, um, I was listening to the mm -hmm. to it earlier about the two windows up above. So directly above or the on that east elevation, same side, uh, those two odd shaped windows are actually in the bathroom. So they're above a tub and in a shower. So they really can't be any different than what they are. Uh, the other well, the other um, note that you guys had mentioned as far as in regards to the windows. Um, most of the windows in the house had been replaced. We're going to use the exact same windows, so they will match. The architect just didn't draw them in that way. Uh, the other thing is um, the trim will match as well. So that's one of the things that we work on, that I work on as, as a designer for my company. When we do additions, especially I specialize in historical homes. So when we do do additions on historical, we want to make them look like the addition was originally part of the house. We don't want it to look... Like, oh, hey, look, that was an addition. So the, up, so so the upper sash will, the upper sash will have all the, the, the grill work in the windows. Correct. Well, okay. whatever's on the exterior of the original house will match on the addition. Yes, sir. Um, we did notice in the working session that I think, I think the east elevation, the, two, the one or two new windows past the, past the end, the head heights were a bit different. Correct, because one's a trance and it's above a tub. Uh, then it was the opposite window, I think. The, the, the west elevation, I think. Um, the, yeah. the west elevation. Yeah, west elevation. Yeah, the, two, the two new windows in the west elevation are one siding line above. Um, I don't know if that's a drafting error. Yeah, because possibly. Yeah, I think that's probably a drafting error. Because on, 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 the, on the west elevation, there's four new windows. They're all right. the same size. They're all the same height. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it it says they're two foot off the floor line at seven foot six. Right. So the question is, is are the existing windows at seven foot six? And because if they're not, you know, you can drop that down. Sure, we can ma we can match the head height of the existing window. I think that's, that's the common. Sure. Right? Yeah, that's not a problem. That shouldn't be a problem at all. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. She's taking notes for me. Oh, okay. That's great. This is being recorded too, so you can go back. Right. And He'll be on YouTube, so you guys can go back. Okay. Yeah. Great. Highlights. <laughs> sure. Um, what is the finish on the concrete on the east elevation? Uh, the existing foundation is painted, so we will paint the new foundation as well. Okay. And then there was a comment about the siding as well, kind of bringing it back. We don't want to do that because we don't want to make it look like it was an addition. So uh, the siding that's there um, has actually been replaced. It's newer siding. So we'll strip that and we'll blend all of that together. So it'll look seamless. Swimming upstream against technical nope. difficulties. No so uh, um, you know, a lot of times on historic homes, what we'll do is pull the addition in a bit to expose the back corners of the, the house to show the original geometry. Yes. And, you know, one thing I was struck by, and it's so nice because we don't see it a lot anymore, is when you drive down the street, all of the houses have great interest and character on the sides. Sure. Um, so it, it, to me, it was worth bringing up the idea of just setting that back a little so you would you would have more of a break and less of a box. Sure. So the other thing with that, one, you can't see the addition from the street, but two, that puts a jetty in my kitchen. So if I bring that in, it pushes my kitchen wall in, which right now my kitchen line, my kitchen's a galley anyway, so it's a straight run. So that pushes my, that changes my whole kitchen way out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I thought it was worth, um, worth having the conversation. Sure, yes, ma'am. Um, also, too, just to verify on the trim widths, you have the new rear doors. Are you going to keep the wider trim around those? Yes. On the okay. Doors on the existing match on the on stuff for windows, doors, soft fascia. Okay, good. That that's. I think all that'll be helpful because it's such a beautiful house and it's it has 
it has such great character. I'd like to, you know. We're actually reusing one. There's a, there is an existing stained glass window that's in one of the old butler's pantries. So we're actually taking that out and reusing it. Yeah, I saw that. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, and, and this is just another conversation item. The pergola over the rear doors to me looks a bit high in proportion to the head height of the, the doors. Um, and then also too, I wondered if you had considered using a roof over those doors just to provide yourselves with some um, shelter from the elements. Like if you're coming in and out and it's pouring rain. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. We had talked about that. The yeah. client wasn't interested in doing that. that okay. They wanted to do the pergola portion of it. Uh, the bottom of the pergola is at a standard eight foot height. Um, so the other portion that where the, the cross members, that's where they actually bolt into the band board of the second mm -hmm. floor of the house. So it's structural as well. Yeah. Um, I think maybe too going to that wider trim will help relieve yes. some of that. So, um, okay. It was just a, a conversation item, but I think once you get that nice wider trim around those doors, um, it will help alleviate the too high look. Yes. Any other comments from the board? No. Right. Um, seven ten, uh, seven ten Fairview Avenue. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve 710 Fairview Avenue with the clarification that the new windows and the addition will match the existing as well as any uh, window trim. I think that was and it, door. right? And That's window and door trim. Yeah, I think that was all that we... Window and door trim and head heights. Oh, and the window heights um, will match the existing window heights. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Hope. you very much. Have a good evening. You as well. All right, one more on the list. It's preliminary 806 East Pacific Avenue, FAR request, and... This guy's busy. <laughs> we actually have uh, a couple of updated drawings based on the preliminary comments, adding with two changes at the past group. Yep. Renderings as well. So we'll have to sure. Okay. Um, at least the changes that we're passing around, we um, we decided to add the window in the pantry as suggested. We're also looking at pushing the house back to save the large red oak, and and in part of doing that, uh, working with uh, uh, John Beckman, the arborist is changing that front porch instead of being poured concrete foundation and slab to be a, a frame porch with tiers so we can move the tiers as needed uh, to go around the treatments. Mm. So we're shifting the house back uh, back uh, at least 10 feet to accomplish that. The, the other two trees, um, one of them is actually dead of the big ones and the other big one is um, has acid termites. So they're recommending and, um, but the other trees in between there, there's things like mulberries, or there's American elms, and some mulberries will have protective fencing. The, the rendered images also show uh, there's a neighboring garage that's 0.87 feet off of us. It's also elevated two feet above ours, which isn't shown in the rendering. That um, garage actually blocks the whole length of where the windows in the kitchen would be. And even the window we're adding in the pantry will look out on that garage. But um, but we do agree that adding that window in the pantry will help break up the elevation a little bit. So yeah. and and just even if it's diffused daylight, we thought that was a good idea. Sure. And then it's not yeah. Yeah. So that's it window. with that extra window. And that window will match the front, um, the smaller front window uh, in the front elevation. Mm -hmm. yeah. my revision. Uh, 
Oh, we have to talk about car. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're jumping ahead to the design. All right, so comments about the FAR request from the board, please. I think it's fine. Yeah, I appreciated your diagram that you put together with the context. That was nice to see. Thank you. Very helpful. I'm the, I'm the odd man out, but I'm, I'm fine. Just, I, think it's, I think it's too massive, but that's fine. Do I have a motion on the FAR request, 806? Make a motion to approve 806 East Pacific FAR Avenue or FAR request. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Me. All right. FAR re request is approved. Next, we'll look at the new house design with revised drawings. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the drawings for 806 East Pacific. Uh, as submitted this evening, the revised set submitted this evening looks great. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. You're approved. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good night. Mm -hmm. Meeting is officially adjourned. Thank you, everyone.